Hi, it's Elizabeth from Hagen's Cardiopulmonary Rehab. I'm back today to tell you how to break that dyspnea cycle. Um, just a refresher, the dyspnea cycle is a big circle of breathlessness, okay? Um, my very first goal here with any of my pulmonary patients is to teach them how to break that cycle. It's imperative that you do that. So um, the first step is kind of simple, but what you need to do is make a commitment to yourself to do more. So this is some per personalized goal setting, and I would actually even write it down. That way it's set in stone and you can do it. The reason this is so important is because your body learns to do what you teach it to do, okay? So if you're going to hang out in bed or you're going to watch TV for most of the day because you don't really feel like doing anything, then the next day when you decide, you know, I really need to do those dishes, you get up to do those dishes and you are out of breath. You don't last, okay? And that's just because if you go from not doing anything right to doing stuff, then obviously you're going to have a harder time with that. So you want to make a commitment to do a little bit every day. Now the second thing that you want to do is you want to focus on what parts of your body you are using to breathe. So before I do anything, just go ahead and take a couple of breaths in and out, just how you normally breathe. Okay, now did you notice any muscles or any parts of your body that were moving while you did that? If you were using your chest, shoulders, neck area mostly to breathe, then um, you are actually not breathing correctly. And it's okay because, you know, unless you learn how to do it, a lot of people don't breathe correctly. So especially if you have pulmonary disease, and the reason is because when you get short of breath, your body's natural reaction is just to get as much as you can in and out and in and out. Well, the problem is that when you're using all of these other muscles to breathe, you're using more oxygen. So that's why that's the very first thing that we want to do is teach you the proper way to breathe. So what we want to do is breathe with your diaphragm. Now the diaphragm is the muscle that is right underneath your lungs. A lot of times when patients have pulmonary disease, the diaphragm will get flattened a little bit. And that's from the extra air that some people with pulmonary disease carry in their lungs. So it's very, very important that you work this muscle, okay? It's a muscle just like you have arm muscles and leg muscles, and um, you do need to work it every day. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. You're gonna put one hand on your chest and one hand on your stomach. I'm gonna have you breathe in, and when you do, you're gonna breathe in through your nose, and you want your stomach to go out. So you're gonna breathe in, belly goes out, and then you're gonna exhale through your mouth, and your belly goes in. So breathe in through your nose, belly goes out, and then you're gonna exhale, belly goes in, okay? That's something that you wanna practice doing every single day, several times a day. It seems so simple, but I promise you, you start doing that and then when you get out of breath, you're going to remember how to do that. You're going to use less oxygen and you're going to be getting more air where you need it to go, okay? Um, the reason I say that is because a lot of times when you are in this dyspnea cycle that we've been talking about, you get to where you can't breathe and you're automatically going to start breathing smaller breaths but faster. You're going to be kind of a panicky type breathing. Well, that type of breathing does not oxygenate your blood. You don't get it far enough down in your lungs. When you're taking in those fast, small breaths, your, your air that you're getting in is probably from about your mouth to maybe about right here. And then it's coming right back out. So the way you get oxygen to your blood is you breathe it in through your nose and you want to get it to the distal ends of your lungs. The little alveoli that are at the distal ends of your lungs, those are the little air sacs that um, get the oxygen to your blood, okay? So, the dyspnea breathing, this is so important. You're gonna breathe in through your nose while your belly goes out and exhale through your mouth while your belly goes in. The other component to this is when you breathe in, you want to breathe in for about two counts and you wanna breathe out for about four. 
there is no exact science to this, but basically you wanna breathe out for twice as long as what you're breathing in. So if you need a bigger breath, you're gonna breathe in for three breaths and out for six. Now, um, the reason that you wanna do this is because, like I told you earlier, some people carry extra air in their lungs, and so this is gonna help you get that air out, okay? Um, this is another thing that you need to practice. So the first thing you wanna do is practice these breathing exercises at home multiple times a day, every day, okay? And um, you do that and then your body is gonna start getting used to breathing that way and it will become second nature to you. But you're also gonna be working out your diaphragm so next time you get really short of breath, that muscle is there to help you breathe, okay? Um, and also, you want to relax all of these muscles because it's very common for people who get short of breath frequently, all of these muscles are going to be really tight. So if you do find yourself just in a tight spot and you're really short of breath, the first thing you want to try to do is relax this upper body, okay? You can lean up against a wall, you can sit down in a chair, but you just want to relax it, kind of tilt your head forward a little bit and then do that diaphragmatic breathing. So um, I'm gonna leave it at that right now. The next part that I'm gonna teach you is purse-lipped breathing, and um, that's another really big breathing technique that people use. So um, the next time I come back, I will teach you how to do that one, and I'll talk to you then, thanks.